One of the great frustrations in acute myeloid leukemia is that even patients um, who get into remission still relapse from the disease. And this is such a depressing thing, both for patients and for clinicians. When we see um, beautiful blood counts, we look under the microscope and we see a uh, morphologically happy looking bone marrow, and yet the disease still relapses. And the reason for this is that looking under the bone marrow or looking at blood counts is just not good enough. It does not reveal the um, unfortunately logs of leukemic cells that are uh, remaining at the completion of therapy. And these cells are now collectively under the umbrella term of measurable residual disease. Um, what's currently happening is that technology is such that you can always find leftover leukemic cells. Unfortunately, I will stipulate to it that with one technology or another, you can always find leukemic cells that are left over after therapy. The question is, what is the quantity and nature of the leftovers that matters for the patient? Because if you have a few cells left over and they're being controlled by the immune system or by a medication and not bothering the patient, that's one thing. If you have them unchecked, then they're likely to grow and recapitulate the uh, original disease. So currently what we're trying to do is figure out, first of all, how to standardize quantification of residual disease so that it makes sense across the world what it means to have 10 to the minus X of leftover leukemic cells. And then the next question is what to do about them. Do you give more treatment that's similar to what got the patient into remission or do you switch to something different? And I would say that it is very clear that even today, the measurement of minimal residual disease is changing what we think about right now in the office because we know, for example, that even allogeneic stem cell transplant is unlikely to be curative for a patient with substantial measurable residual disease. So we're not sending those patients as directly to transplant as we might have even a year ago. That said, we have to figure out what to offer them instead, and I think that's where the giant black box is at the moment, that if you have a patient where you know that there is measurable residual disease and you want to do something, what is it actually that you're going to do?